Am I the asshole for telling my stepmother-in-law that I'm glad she can't have children? When my wife was a teenager, her stepmother had health issues that eventually led to a hysterectomy. She and my father-in-law had been trying to conceive prior to that, and she's very open about how painful it was to become unable to have kids. She's been in therapy for years, but this is still a sore subject, so we don't bring it up. During the pandemic, stepmother-in-law became a vegetarian. While I obviously have no problem with that, no one else in the family is, and she tends to get very preachy about it. There is one specific video of cattle being slaughtered and processed that she has sent multiple family members. Because of that preachiness, my wife and I try to avoid having meals with her. I've also been told that she and father-in-law often eat in separate rooms. Anyway, my wife and I attended a wedding about two weeks ago. Our regular babysitter cancelled on us last minute, so father-in-law and stepmother-in-law volunteered to watch our kids, eight male and five female. They babysat our children once a few months ago, and things went fine. So my wife and I agreed. The kids were asleep when we returned home. The next day, my daughter was very upset. She barely spoke all morning. When we sat down for lunch, she started crying and refused to eat. We tried to talk to her, but she refused to tell us what was wrong. Eventually, my son told us what happened. We had promised the kids that they could have burgers for dinner. My father-in-law was aware of that, but he apparently fell asleep less than an hour after we left. When it was time for dinner, the kids went to ask stepmother-in-law to make the burgers, and she refused. My son offered to wake father-in-law up, but she said no to that too. She said she would make the kids something else for dinner. When my children started begging for the burgers, stepmother-in-law showed them the cattle video. She apparently told them my wife was secretly against them eating meat, which is why they hesitated to tell us what she'd done. Absolute garbage individual. My wife and I had a talk with our kids and managed to get them to feel better. After they went to bed, we called stepmother-in-law, and she confirmed that she had shown them the video. To say we are both outraged would be putting it lightly. My wife and I immediately told her that we're cutting her off from our kids, and will probably do the same with father-in-law for falling asleep while he was supposed to be babysitting. Stepmother-in-law started trying to defend herself. She told us she was only trying to help, and that we should be making more efforts to get our kids to eat healthy. It only made me angrier. I told her she has no idea how glad I am that she can't have children, because I'd pity the child that would have her as a mother. After that, she hung up on us. Father-in-law has been calling and texting us. He is apologetic for falling asleep, but insists that cutting him and his wife off is an overreaction. He's also angry that I mocked stepmother-in-law's infertility. Apparently she is distraught at what I said, and father-in-law is demanding I apologize to her. Honestly, I don't think I'm the asshole here, but I'm wondering whether I went too far. My wife agrees that it was a low blow that stepmother-in-law deserved to hear, but a low blow nonetheless. Am I the asshole? Edit. Okay, to clarify some things that I haven't already said in the comments, father-in-law and stepmother-in-law babysat at our place, not theirs. I can't believe I have to say this, but I have no problem with vegetarianism. I actually tried to become a vegetarian a few years ago, but couldn't for medical reasons. In stepmother-in-law's case, what I have a problem with is her preachiness. In general, my wife and I have always had a meh relationship with stepmother-in-law, but we never disliked her or treated her poorly. She's made a few comments about introducing vegetarianism to our kids in the past, but never anything this extreme. I'll admit I don't know much about stepmother-in-law's medical history, I only know about the hysterectomy because she didn't react well to either of my wife's pregnancies, and they had to tell me what was going on. We promised the kids the burgers back when they were going to be watched by their usual babysitter. Father-in-law and stepmother-in-law replaced her at the very last minute, and the kids ate chicken the last time they babysat. We didn't plan it, father-in-law found it in the fridge and cooked it, so we maintained the burgers. I saw the video a few years ago, it's a little under 5 minutes long and is very graphic. Not the worst of those videos, but definitely not suitable for children. From my son's description, I think they watched most of it. I'm more angry about stepmother-in-law lying to my children about their mother than the fact she showed them the video, but the whole situation infuriates me. My wife is angry that her father fell asleep for personal reasons, but we're not certain about cutting him off. We won't budge with stepmother-in-law. 
Having read most of your comments, I think I'll apologize for what I said about her fertility, but I will maintain everything else. I don't want her near my children ever again. I'll update when I can. Quick message to OP's wife here. A low blow doesn't mean that it wasn't warranted, and it doesn't mean that it was wrong to do that. I think it was actually called for in this instance. Yeah, we should just let the stepmother-in-law get away with traumatizing our children, showing them a video of cattle getting slaughtered and processed. That's a really normal thing to show a five-year-old girl in order to have her not want to eat burgers. What a normal thing to do. That woman went lower than hell. Any blow to her at this point is nothing in comparison to what she did, and if anything, she deserves 10 more blows for what she did. If father-in-law seriously demands an apology and thinks she deserves one, they both deserve to be completely cut off from you guys. That is genuinely psychologically damaging. They could have done irreparable harm to this girl. For the rest of her life, even. Who knows? You don't know what the knock-on effects of that is going to be while someone is developing? What a deranged, heartless individual your stepmother-in-law is. There is no way that you're the asshole. Ducking Ridiculous says, Not the asshole. She's distraught? Your child is distraught. She showed them a video of animals being slaughtered and told them a lie about their parents. What she did was manipulative, dishonest, and cruel. There's a reason why those videos have a rating. They're not meant to be viewed by children. The children will have trauma for some time. Beth says, This right here just shows that she would be an unfit parent. The dig at infertility might have been low, but what she did was far lower. She puts her agenda before the children's welfare. Children are not pawns. They will remember that video. OP is probably going to be dealing with nightmares for some time. Reddit Red Rabbit says, Normally I'd say the snide remarks about infertility are out of line. End of story. But your stepmother-in-law has found the exception. OP then comes back with an update and says, Though my wife and I have no intention to let her back in our children's lives, I decided to apologize to stepmother-in-law for what I said. My wife and I talked a lot about the subject. She said that based on her history with her stepmother, it really was a good thing that she didn't have children. But before we had ours, my wife had always wanted to be a mother and was terrified about the possibility of not being able to. That fear got worse around the time stepmother-in-law had the hysterectomy. My wife told me her stepmother was agonized when it happened, and even though she agreed with me, she felt it might be best to apologize. Another thing that led me to make the decision was my mother. Before my brother and I were born, my parents had a stillborn daughter. They didn't talk about her much, so I didn't even think of it at the time, but my brother brought it up a few days ago. I couldn't stop thinking about her, and as a parent, I can't even begin to imagine how my mother felt. I would never mention anything related to that out of anger, no matter how wrong my mother was. In the end, my wife and I agreed that, while I should apologize, we absolutely can't budge on cutting stepmother off. We can't forgive what she did. It took us hours to convince our daughter to eat. Anything, not just meat. Even after that, she refused to eat meat for a few days because she didn't want to be evil. Our son wasn't as shaken but he still had trouble sleeping for a few nights. My wife and I sat them down and had a long conversation about it. We answered every question they had as well as we could. Thankfully, we were able to reassure both of our kids that eating meat wouldn't make them bad people. They are still a little bit distraught, but they're doing much better and eating normally again. Our main concern will always be their health and happiness. Stepmother-in-law compromised both, so we had no doubts about cutting her from our lives. We called father-in-law and stepmother-in-law this weekend. I apologized for what I said to stepmother-in-law, but we told her that we were still cutting her off. As expected, she didn't take it well. She started going off about how she was trying to help our children and we were terrible parents for depriving them of that care. I'm pretty sure she was crying. She said that it was awful that such cruel, ungrateful people could raise kids and not her, and we shouldn't allow our children to take part in something that caused so much unnecessary suffering. After about a minute of that, father-in-law managed to get stepmother-in-law to stop and hang up the phone. My wife later spoke with her father separately. Father-in-law apologized again for falling asleep. He said he understood why we were upset, but promised he would never do anything like that again. We decided to forgive him, but we won't leave the kids in his care again, and he will only be allowed to see them without his wife. 
We have options besides our usual babysitter. Father-in-law agreed. He invited us for a family dinner at a steakhouse that my wife loved as a kid. He hasn't been there since stepmother-in-law became a vegetarian. We are going this Friday. I definitely have my regrets, but I'm satisfied with how things turned out. More than anything, I'm glad that my children are alright. Watching my daughter refuse to eat anything was terrifying, and I'll never forgive stepmother-in-law for scaring her and her brother like that. But they are getting better every day, and I think things are going to be okay. Once again, thank you for all of your advice and support. I'll try to reply to more comments this time. Cute Profession says, Showing small children horrific videos is bad enough, but lying about their parents is maybe worse. You are not the asshole for keeping this woman away from your children. Pippet says, I don't know. Showing a small child an extremely graphic video of cattle being slaughtered? Only an effing psychopath would do that. I agree that lying to the parents was really bad, but showing that kind of thing to little kids, I think that's horrifying. Frankly, Opie is 100% right that it's a good thing stepmother never had children, and I'm glad Opie is cutting her off from any access to their kids. I think it's pretty hilarious that father-in-law is taking them out to a steak dinner to apologize. OP says, Agreed. But I don't think it's out of spite. He loves the place too, and has been wanting to take the kids there for a while. His wife refuses to go there, so he never had the opportunity. We did have a family dinner there once, before stepmother-in-law became a vegetarian, but my son was too young to remember it, and my daughter wasn't born yet. Pippet replies, yeah, lol, but I still appreciate the irony. And at least it sounds like he understands his wife was in the wrong. I hope y'all enjoy the dinner, and stepmother-in-law doesn't cause drama. I hope your kids are doing better. I can't imagine how awful it was for them to see that kind of video at that age. Hopefully they'll completely forget about it. OP replies, It was difficult at first, but they're doing much better now. I think we've managed to reassure them we'd never think any less of them. I was gonna say, you'd think that if you messed up this badly that you never have access to those kids again, you'd have a brain and like, apologize and at least put a face on to, I don't know, to put out the fire that you started? But no, stepmother-in-law doesn't think. Stepmother-in-law's brain has been rotted away by brain rot from propaganda. If she had kids of her own, she would do untold damage to them. That's just a fact at this point. And yeah, it's pretty ironic and funny they went to a steakhouse for that dinner. <laughs> she's, she's not going to take that one well. That's, that's rubbing salt in the wound right there. I won't lie, this story got me real pissed off, that's for sure. I'm glad that they are not giving her any contact. There is no possibility for that. She deserves the worst. Thank you for sharing your story with us, OP, and thank you for doing the right thing. But what about you guys? What did you think of this one? Was I too harsh? Was OP too harsh? Does she deserve redemption? Let me know in the comments. Let's move on to our next story. Now this one was also posted in the Am I the Arsehole Here subreddit by the user Soldier20011 titled Am I the Arsehole Here for my wife saying I'm not good enough and now I want a divorce? Ask me anything. I'm a 23 year old male in the military. My wife and I have been married for almost three years. The first year was hard. I'm used to being abused by others, so I'm a social introvert and don't really understand what's considered wrong in a relationship. I've never cheated though. You ever just read something and feel like you got punched in the chest? Oh my god. Someone help my boy. She taught me a lot about how to act in a relationship, but if I'm being honest, she abused my trust. She tricked me into not trying to have friends or playing games with attractive females. She even got me to accept her having a second partner. <laughs> oh no. She made me believe that she would divorce me for him and I provided for him and let him stay at our home. Basically, she got to cheat on me with zero consequences because I was terrified of being alone again. All I ever wanted was to get married and have children, but she stole that dream from me, telling me we would never have kids and that I had to accept it. I'm terrified of being alone again. My father died when I was nine, my mother abandoned me in North Carolina right before a hurricane, and when I managed to get back to my home state, CPS took me from her and put me in foster care. Trust and love are things that I never really got to have, so I'm desperate to feel safe and cared about, but she broke the camel's back. I'm currently on rotation, and my wife has done nothing but treat me like garbage. I just broke. 
When she told me that she would always need another man because I would never be enough for her, I stopped caring. I told her that if she brought up divorce again, which is her main threat to me, I would file for divorce the next day. She did threaten me again, so I granted her request for divorce. And since then, the only time I talk to her is to handle bills. She is trying to talk me out of it, but I refuse. I don't acknowledge her for anything but bills. All I can do is work, cry, and hate my entire existence. Honestly, I think about self-deleting every day. It feels like the most logical solution. My life has been hell forever, and I don't believe I'll find love, so why stick around? So am I the asshole? I understand why you feel that way, OP, but please, at least, you know, read the comments here and acknowledge that there is reason to stick around. I believe you'll find love. I feel like you've just been abused all of your life, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And not, not the one to heaven, don't be going to that one. The one where you stick around, you have a good time with us, you forget about her, and you move on from that shitty, shitty past that you have. Life ain't all sunshine and rainbows, I'll, I'll give you that one, but it doesn't have to be all doom and gloom either. You know, there, there is a way forward. You're not the asshole here, she is a complete piece of shit. That's for sure. Solid Feature says, Not the asshole. Go to your first sergeant or CO and tell them you need emotional counseling and JAG assistance in order to leave your emotionally and financially abusive spouse. Do exactly what the counselor and the lawyer tell you to do. This is not your fault. Your wife is a parasite who sees you as a meal ticket. Wild As says, this post really triggered me because this woman manipulated him knowing about his past and trouble with feeling abandoned. I am really broken hearted for this young man and want to rip one into the wife for being an abusive and manipulative soul sucker. And Dr. Big Pipe says, get divorced, find someone new, but before you do that, get some help. Find out how to love yourself. Accept what happened in the past and move on. You'll stay plenty busy being in the military. Been in the military for 10 years, seen countless people go through divorce. You'll be okay and better off later in life. And OP comes back to us with an update and says, So, wow, a lot has happened. This is just the update, so if you want more context, go to the original post. I spoke to my higher-ups and spared no details. I even provided evidence. They told me the divorce is the only way forward and that I'm not responsible for paying for everything. They also informed me how much I actually have to give her. I found out the day I left that she had her affair partner moved in, which strengthened my resolve. I told her that we are 100% getting a divorce. I got her affair partner off my phone bill and I also removed my card from her accounts. I'm moving in with a buddy that I made while out there so I don't have to live with her at all. Once I'm divorced, I'm going to take some time to love myself and build a friend group. Then, when I'm ready, I'll start dating again. Also, I forgot to mention that in my original post, I did kick out her boyfriend and affair partner before I left, but she moved him back in once I was gone. For all those who gave me advice on my first post, thank you. For those who criticized me, thank you too. I learned a lot about myself, and I don't know if there will be another update, but I think if it is worth sharing, then I will. I love you all. Thank you all for your help. Material Knight says, I'm glad your chain of command actually helped you out a little. Keep that head down and just F and cruise for a little bit. Make friends with your guys in your unit if you can, and just focus on finding yourself. I had too many of my guys getting into shit like this back in the day, and not all of them made it out. Stay down, dude. She ain't shit. Consistent Resun says, Wow, I'm looking at the same situation. I feel fully lost. All I do is work, and now that may be all I have. My wife asked for an open marriage, and I immediately suspected she had a side guy and is trying to make it seem legit. I can be an asshole, and I work so much that my one day home, I'm gone Monday to Friday every week, and traveling makes most of one day off, is filled with preparations to work for the week, laundry, meal planning, etc., plus as much relaxation as possible. I dropped the ball. Thought we were on the same level, but she's not happy. I'm not either, but I thought that we were working towards being happy together. I was wrong. Good luck, buddy, and thanks for sharing. OP says, 
Don't let it trick you, brother. Stay strong and learn from my mistakes. So glad to see OP giving advice from personal life experiences. Glad to see you didn't let this one get you down, OP. I'm glad that you didn't do it, and I'm glad that you have the help that you needed so sorely in that first post. Chin up and here's to better days. Also, what did you guys think of this story? Let me know down in the comments below. And with that said, it's time for the next one. This one was posted by user FunAlternative9808, titled, Am I the asshole for being mad at my sister because she showed a PowerPoint presentation with private sexy pictures of my husband and I at our wedding reception? This past weekend was my wedding, and it was technically my second proper wedding because my husband and I eloped and got married in Vegas. So this was an event more for the family than for us. My sister was my maid of honor, and she showed a PowerPoint presentation slash pic montage during the reception, but I thought that it was just going to be cute pictures and videos of me and my husband. We've been friends since the first grade, so there's a lot of material, but instead, my sister was like, For all of those who don't know, this is my sister and husband's second wedding. Let's see how the first one went. And here's the thing. We got married in Vegas. Shit got a little weird and we took a million pictures and videos and many of them looked super inappropriate out of context and in context. Like, we had no bachelor or bachelorette party, so the night before the wedding we went to a strip club with female strippers and to one with male strippers as a gag. So there was a pic of me glaring fake angry at my husband looking at some big ass titties and one of my husband doing the same while looking at a dude doing the helicopter with his dick. There was a picture of us eating dominoes in a hotel room only in our underwear. And there was a picture of us doing an impromptu sexy cowboy cowgirl photo shoot near the Grand Canyon. It's an inside joke and it's too long to explain. There was a picture of me at the hotel pool wearing a seriously minuscule bikini that may as well have been invisible and virtually my whole ass was hanging out with my husband doing the Will Smith meme. The one where he goes up and slaps you, that one? There was a picture of my husband naked playing the guitar with only the guitar covering his junk and me fake singing next to him wearing only a long t-shirt. There was even a picture that had nothing to do with the wedding of us in costume as Cyclops and Emma Frost for a Halloween party so it obviously looked like I'm wearing lingerie, which I was, half, and my husband's package in a tight suit is super noticeable. The presentation finished with an admittedly very nice montage of pictures and video of me and my husband in school and high school, etc., juxtaposed with more recent and appropriate pics. And it was genuinely very moving, and everyone loved that part, but I was seriously dying of embarrassment about the other pictures, I mean, my grandma was there, and both of my husband's grandparents too, and a bunch of people who were technically, but not really, close to. Our friends thought that it was hilarious though. Am I overreacting for thinking my sister crossed a line by including those pictures, which I only shared with her in confidence? To be honest, this just sounds like a prank that went way too far here. This is yet another situation where it's like, was she a moron or was she malicious? And if she's the kind of person that is an asshole and everything, my question is, why did you trust her to make the presentation? And if she's just an idiot, then I can kind of give her a little bit of a pass, being like, this was just wrong place, wrong time kind of joke. She definitely should have run this by someone and got a kind of feel for the room of the vibes of like what was cool and what was not cool to share. But regardless, there are consequences to her actions here. And if you are upset about your photos being shared that you didn't want to have been shared that were not greenlit, then you are absolutely valid in your feelings, and I don't think that you're overreacting here. Lucky Effective 1564 says, You should have said, Thank you, sis, for all of your hard work in making the presentation. It only goes to prove what an utterly stupid, thoughtless person you are. OP replies, I said to her something to that effect, and she started crying and called me ungrateful. The part that kills me is that the second part of the presentation, the one that didn't include the Vegas pictures, was the best thing ever. Like she somehow found a previously unearthed home video of my husband and I when we were like 8 years old, saying that we were going to marry each other when we grew up, and that made me so emotional that I felt like I was going to faint. If she had just stuck to that, it would have been absolutely perfect. OP, when called a prude by a downvoted comment, says, 
I mean, I don't think I'm a prude just because I don't want my grandma and random family members to look at pictures of me looking at helicoptering dicks, or me at my husband in our underwear, or semi-naked, or my ass hanging out. I suppose some people in the audience thought it was fun, but some probably found it scandalous. I don't think my sister did it to embarrass me at all, I think she just wasn't thinking. And OP comes back with an update and says, I'm gonna give this little update for closure's sake, and then put this whole thing behind me. First off, I was taken aback by the amount of comments that said my sister clearly did this to humiliate me, most likely out of jealousy. Jealousy of what? My husband? She's gay and has been in a loving relationship for ages. My wedding? My mum has even offered to pay for her wedding a million times, and my sister is always declined. She doesn't want one. My trip to Las Vegas? My sister had wilder nights every other weekend back in the day. No, I don't think this was done maliciously, she's just a moron. So, the fallout of the pictures. My mum and aunt blew up at my sister about them, telling her that some family members low-key commented that they were pretty trashy. My husband assures me that on his family side, everyone thought that it was hilarious and they are all chill about it. Only one of my elderly aunts approached me and, referring to the photo where my husband's package looks sizable in the Cyclops costume, whispered, congratulations, <laughs> and walked away with a wink and a smile. So that was wild and unexpected, but nice. At least someone on my side of the family can see the bright side. Anyway, my sister got furious at me and my mom and called us unbelievably grateful and says this is the last time that she does anything for either of us and right now she isn't talking to any one of us and I don't feel like talking to her either. Things are tense with my mom too because she's kind of blaming me, saying things like, what were you thinking? Why would you take those kinds of pictures? And I'm not here for that bullshit, so I'm kind of muting her too for the moment. Yeah, she can shut up, prude. Prude, mum. Oh, sorry, prude, Andy. What a Debbie Downer. Out of curiosity, I called my sister's partner, let's call her Rose, who helped her edit the presentation, and asked what was my sister thinking including those pics. She said they cleared it with my husband in advance. I told him and he was like, what? No? He said my sister asked him if they could add some of the Vegas pictures to the presentation, but he assumed that they were the non-weird, non-inappropriate ones, like the ones of us at the strip, at the gondola thing, etc. Why would he even assume that she meant the inappropriate pictures? She's going to try to claim some misunderstanding or something, but I don't buy it. Anyway, I know I'm going to forgive my sister eventually, and my mum will do so too. The portion with the other pictures and videos, and especially the video of 8-year-old us, seriously moved me so deeply that it's winning the battle against the full-body cringe that I'm still experiencing from the pictures. I'm going on my honeymoon this weekend, and hoping everything will be back to normal by the time I come back. OP added this in the comments. Honestly, the most mortifying part for me was wondering how his family, specifically his parents, were going to take it but apparently even his grandparents thought that it was a hoot. So that kinda gives me a bit of peace. As for my own family, meh, it's honestly whatever. They can think I'm low class and trashy all they want. I couldn't care less. War Tonka says, I think the sister did it as a prank and genuinely thought people would find it hilarious. But when they didn't and she rightfully was called out, she got defensive and doubled down. As bad as adding the photo was, if the sister had sincerely apologized, I'm sure this whole situation would have blown over. To be honest, her reaction is worse than the photos. Pedantic Puma says, Agree. I feel like this leans more towards prank-like behavior than anything truly malicious, and I don't get jealous vibes. Seems like a sibling trying to raz the other sibling, but way overshooting the mark. Well overshooting for the most part, sounds like a lot of the guests found it hilarious. That's where I think you're also right about the sister's response. All could have been forgiven with an apology. And Jizeki says, Hell, I think it's even a kind of, why is this a big deal, we can usually have fun like this, but like OP said, yeah, but let's not include grandma and a bunch of extended family, please. Some people just have no sense of context for whether stuff like this is appropriate or not. Yeah, and I tend to agree with that one. 
wrong place, wrong time. But the mother definitely had the wrong read on this one, being like, oh, you, you devils, why would you even take photos like that? Oh my god, let people have some fun, mama. Don't take it that far, Jesus. Like, I get the sister was definitely coming from a place of caring and, yeah, a bit of razzin, razzmatazz, having a good time with this one, you know. T stirring the pot, being a wind-up merchant. But not in front of grandma, not in front of the extended family. Poor, poor, don't gotta see that. Anyway, guys, what's your take on this one? Am I spectacularly off base? Am I correct? Let me know down below, please, God, let me know. And that's all I have for you today. I do hope you enjoyed the video. I do hope you have a good day. Have a good sleep, and I'll see you next time. Bye.